Hello, you're watching the Tropics Topics of September the 22nd, uh, 2018. We had a little bit of a break in between all the activity we had earlier in the month, but now we have activity uprising once more. Uh, we have uh, two areas to watch and two cyclones currently active. Uh, first of all, let's start with the areas to watch. This is Invest 92L with a 10% chance formation in the next uh, 48 hours and 30% in the next five days. This will eventually progress westward and maybe approach the Carolinas. Uh, which they obviously don't need right now. Um, this disturbance, which is not tagged as an invest yet for some reason because it just uh, just recently formed, uh, has a 60% chance of development in the next 40 hours and a high chance in the next five days, 70%. And this one will just likely meander out here in the open Atlantic, but we'll discuss that one later, obviously. Uh, Tropical Depression 11, which formed last night, uh, currently has winds of 30 miles an hour, pressure of 1,008 millibars. This will likely dissipate later today. And a brand new, uh, newly formed Tropical Storm Kirk, which has formed to the south of the Cabo Verde Islands, really far south actually. Winds of 40 miles an hour, pressure of 1,005 millibars. Here's a wide shot of the entire basin right here. Uh, we can see 98L south of Bermuda. Uh, the current uh, subtropical system that's forming up here between uh, Bermuda and the Azores up here. Uh, tropical Depression 11 and Kirk on the very edge of your screen uh, right over here. Uh, so let's start with the uh, disturbance south of Bermuda. This is Invest 98L. And this does uh, have some, and I mean some semblance to Florence, as in that when Florence moved up into uh, the northeast United States as a post-tropical cyclone, it had a shortwave trough extending from its actual uh, pressure center. And this low right here kind of cut off from that uh, shortwave and is progressed into the Atlantic has dipped south now and it's just this big area of broad rotation. Uh, so this would not, so if this does become renamed, it would not gain the name Florence, it would gain a new name because it was not directly associated with the actual vorticity maximum with Florence. So we can see here it's very broad, not very much convection, although convection is based off to the east and getting sheared to the south by the other system that's up in the North Atlantic that we'll get to after this. And you can see it's drifting slowly to the south, and it'll eventually start to kind of curve off towards, uh, curve off towards the west as some uh, some ridging builds in over here. And this could eventually approach the Carolinas. Uh, chances of formation though are low. However, if it if it, if this does, excuse me, then it would be just a big rainmaker for the area, which for obvious reasons they do not need right now because they just dealt with Florence dropping dropping up to three feet of rain in some areas and. Rivers are still cresting, and roads are still flooded out, and people don't have some people don't have power or internet access. So right now, the last thing they need is a new uh, a system to bring a lot of rain to them. And this could happen; it could not. We'll just have to wait and see. Either way, this would not happen until sometime in the middle of next week, uh, if anything. Uh, moving on to the North Atlantic system, I put a little bit of a water va water vapor uh, tangent on this because it kind of shows the evolution of this better. You can see here that there is a there's a low forming here, and it's beginning to really consolidate now with all this convection based off to off to the east of the center, and as a result, this thing is quickly gaining uh, characteristics that are akin to that of a subtropical cyclone more than likely, um, and then this is going to just kind of drift around in this area. But there's going to be something interesting happen after this kind of meanders in this area. It might go undergo something kind of interesting, as we can see here in the GFS model. You can see that here's our, our low right now. It's beginning to kind of cut off from the uh, actual flow. And we see here, this is a bonafide, uh, more than likely this is a subtropical or maybe borderline tropical cyclone up here in the North Atlantic on Sunday evening. And if this does get, gain a name, it would gain the L name, Leslie, on the list. Um, and this would just uh, drift around up here. But you can see uh, you can see by you know Monday night into Tuesday, we have this other tropical coming in over Greenland, and this is having a short wave extending from it. And this is going to interact with whatever the uh, disturbance is at this time, and could potentially result in something kind of interesting, because as this short wave here cuts off, due to the interaction with our disturbance, it's going to be something that we have to kind of monitor, because we don't really know exactly how this will evolve. We don't know if this is just the model playing games. We don't really know exactly what this could uh, and end up like we don't know if this could gain a new name if it's named in the first place. Assuming uh, we'll just have to wait and see on exactly what happens with this evolution. You can see here in at 68 
168 hours a week from now, you can see it's basically in this exact same position as it started um, right now. So that's uh, the North Atlantic disturbance. Uh, still not this day as an investor, likely will be very soon. Moving on to Tropical Depression 11. Now we're getting into the actual uh, cyclones here. Uh, here's Tropical Depression 11, uh, which just designated last night, although I would argue that it would have been designated a bit earlier than last night. Uh, we can see here that it's really suffering today. We can see this sh very strong uh, westerly shear cutting over the system, and you can see that here through this cirrus flow, uh, over like overcutting the actual uh, system. And we can see here that we have a very, very weak low-level center that's drifting off towards the northwest. This might very soon open up into just a very broad uh, uh, circulation here, and or just might completely cut off into an open wave. We'll just have to wait and see on that, though that is likely to happen later today. As we can see, this is very weak right now, and we'll just continue to weaken as the shear persists over the storm. And you can see all the convection over here isn't able to center over this um, circulation. It's all being sheared off towards the east and being basically based out there. So nothing can really happen in the short term for this thing to really get going. Uh, here's a National Hurricane Center forecast showing it dissipating tonight. Um, and then the remnants may move very slowly towards potentially the Lesser Antilles, uh, which will just be a, probably a rainmaker and potentially some gusty winds for this portion of the Lesser Antilles. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see on that. So that's uh, Tropical Depression 11. Very unlikely that it will gain a name and very because it's already beginning to weaken into 30 miles an hour. And yeah, that's uh, the Tropical Depression 11. Here we uh, and here we are to Tropical Storm Kirk. This just formed, literally not even an hour ago uh, at the time of this recording. And you can see here it is a very um, quickly organizing system, I guess you could say. Uh, really, convection is starting to get going over this portion of the storm. Though the center is actually kind of bundled up somewhere in here. Uh, but this will continue to organize itself out over the next few days. Uh, another thing that's really interesting with Kirk is that it's very far south right now. If we go back to the National Hurricane Center page, you can see that it, it's at basically 8.3 north. That's barely, and I mean barely, in the main development region. And I believe this is the furthest south named storm on record since 1979, I believe. I know Isidore of 1990 formed a bit farther south than this, but didn't get named until it was a bit farther north. Um, but either way, it's still very low latitude, and this is probably going to help it a little bit throughout its life because, as we can see here, there's a lot of dry air up here to the north of the storm. And some of that is getting entrained into the storm and somewhat disrupting circulation a little bit. Uh, we can kind of see that here in the uh, ASCAT pass, uh, ASCAT, excuse me, uh, from earlier today. And we can see that it is somewhat kind of contaminating all of these wind barbs in here because there are some little uh, micro scale interactions going on between these two features that could potentially disrupt uh, the data coming from the satellite to actually read the wind data but but either way this is continued to organize and as in my opinion rightfully been called a tropical storm uh, so Kirk will continue to move off towards the west uh, at a pretty good clip uh, currently moving at about 14 15 miles per hour I believe and that will only continue to increase. If we look here at the GFS model, uh, this is out to 102 hours. So this is Wednesday morning. Here's Kirk on the model, and this model isn't very, isn't really picking up on the storm very well, and just kind of has a very weak wave going across here. So I just chose this time because this is probably the most accurate or akin to what it would actually be at this point. We can see here that here's the storm right here, and you can see it's moving pretty quickly here. This is a span of six hours. It's moved quite a good distance, and you can see also at the upper levels that there isn't really much flow here. So what that means is that as this continues to move off towards the west, it will likely maintain intensity over the next few days or intensify because shear isn't very high, uh, but then it will start to pick up in speed. Now, that would just mean that it would approach the Lesser Tilly sooner, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, but that also means that it's going to shear itself because there's not a whole lot of flow up here in the upper levels you can see here. There's a bunch of whites in here which indicate winds of less than 20 knots. If we do have that, and the surface flow is about 15 knots, or maybe even a slightly higher, uh, then that will be causing a pretty good shear over the storm. Still, even if you don't have any upper level flow, if you don't have upper level flow and have a pretty strong uh, low level flow, that's still a sh that's still wind shear. That still qualifies for the definition of wind shear. So that will probably be impeding on Kirk. And the forecast out to the to the point where it's in this area by Wednesday, 
Wednesday and Thursday next week. It's still a bit murky at this point because we don't know exactly how this one will be evolving over the next few days. If we look here at the European model, this model has a much better handle on the system, I think, uh, just because it actually initializes it better. And we can see that here, although it's a little bit weak here, it's actually a bonafide tropical storm now, so this might be a bit weak. As you can see here, it progresses it eastward, it opens it, has it kind of weak tomorrow, but then it progresses it westward and uh, consolidates really before it approaches the southern Limburn Islands and then moves through um, between uh, Grenada and St. Vincent tomorrow, or not tomorrow, excuse me, uh, Thursday, and then moves into the Caribbean and eventually dissipates because shear will increase over that area, actual, like directional shear will increase over that portion of the basin as it has been for a while, although it kind of depends on how strong Kirk is by the time it approaches the Lesser Antilles as to what the evolution will be like within the Caribbean, because trades in this region of the basin are slower now that we're approaching the latter half of September and into October, so this portion of the basin may be a bit more favorable for a tropical cyclone to enter and prosper, though we'll just have to kind of wait and see how that actually evolves. It depends more on how Kirk actually pans, pans out over the southern region of tropical Atlantic. Uh, so here's the National Hurricane Center forecast for Kirk, showing it peaking. It peaks at a 60 mile an hour tropical storm, so a moderate tropical storm uh, by Monday, I believe, in the early part of next week, and then progresses it towards the lesser until it weakens it a little bit. <clears throat> uh, but also kind of shows it moving into the lesser Antilles as potentially a tropical storm, although this, again, this portion of the forecast is still a bit murky at this point, just because we're not entirely sure how Kirk will evolve, considering that the storm is so brand new at this point. We'll just have to wait for more model guidance to come through, and we'll have a better handle on what the storm will actually be like uh, throughout its future. All right, so that's the Atlantic scene right now. Uh, the break was, life, was nice while it lasted, although... Unfortunately, the Atlantic was playing other games, and now we are back to business now with four current things to watch right now, two uh, cyclones, and we'll likely see a third uh, pretty soon. And uh, just stay tuned for more updates regarding all the Atlantic activity and anything else tropics related. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to stay weather alert during this time.